Closing is a natural part of the sales process, and if you're not doing it, you ain't making no money. But there's so many different ways that people go about closing. Mine is, well, I won't tell you exactly what it is, but as you dive into this episode, you get a chance to hear from my good friend, Yano Anayo, and uh, you may recognize him. You may recognize this guy. Does that one look familiar? <laughs> well, I'll tell you a lot about that. Let's go ahead and dive in. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited for the opportunity to be here with you today. And today we're going to talk to the one and only Grover Dill. Uh, if you've seen that in the teaser, this is Yano Anayo. He is the uh, char- he played the character Grover Dill in a, in a Christmas story, and that the Christmas story is a classic Christmas movie. Talking to um, t- getting a chance to talk to him, but it's something that we have in our family tradition right now, um, and we absolutely love it. And uh, I remember as a kid, my brother and I and sister and our family watching that 24 Hours of Christmas Story, right? Um, but Yano, he's not only in acting. He his career, he has an acting career. Had his acting career, and now he he has his businesses. And sales is a critical part of what he does. And import, it's important that you understand how to be able to sell effectively. And Yano is going to walk us through how he closes and utilize uh, and to be more effective at closing. How we can help our team members to be more effective at closing. If this is your first time listening to our podcast, know that this show is designed to do two things. One, to teach you how to build pipeline, and two, to give you strategies and ideas on how you can close better. And today, Yano is going to tell you about some of those things. Can't wait to have you check it out. Let's go ahead and listen to what Yano has to share and how he's using closing in his career right now. The one and only Yano. Welcome to the show, Yano. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, Yano, um, you know, we have to do a play on this. Like, For sure. You... Uh, we're talking about closing the deal here and known as the bully. I mean, you know how to close some deals. I'm sure you know how to swindle some folks out of money back as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> that was the hustle. That was the hustle. <laughs> Yano is no long, not a bully at all, man. Yano, I bragged about you a little bit there in a the teaser, talked to them about you, and many of us are familiar with you um, in your role in um, you know, the Christmas story. And but obviously people don't realize sometimes that you typically have real jobs and businesses, um, especially when you're acting and you know post your acting career. But I would love for you to take a second and tell us a little bit more about what you do right now, man, and mm. uh, and how you got into them sales skills. <laughs> okay, so um, well, it, it's been a, a an evolving process of what it is that I do now yeah um started this business called the christmas story family about five years ago uh, Mm -hmm. which was the accumulation of a christmas story fans and and if all you listeners out there have ever heard of the movie or haven't heard of the movie or seen the movie or it's near and dear to you um if it is near and dear to you probably very (laughs) well aware that there are millions of fans around this movie why because um, it is a movie that has established itself as traditions uh, inside of the household, right? And and you even have your own unique story about yeah. how a Christmas story came into your life. Um, so this this accumulation of uh, fans um, also grew into an e-commerce business where now we can offer them products and services, uh, which then grew into a private community, a, a inner circle type of membership based community, uh, which now is growing into something pretty large like we've got over a hundred thousand fans into this group you know we've got a pretty good base of like 28,000 people on an email list and so you know the aspects of running you know a business are far and wide um, which is never taught in high school or even yeah. sometimes taught as an MBA right all of these nuances are learned through trial and error but also hiring coaches to teach you ways that work and what mm-hmm. doesn't work um, and I highly recommend people hire coaches because that's going to help you get up, kind of travel through the hard times with figuring out how to produce more income. So now that's what I do full time. And we are working on a very large project with the uh, city of Hammond, Indiana, because that's the birthplace of the movie. And so we're super excited about that. I, I can't necessarily give any details yet because, yeah. you know, we're at that point now where 
we've done our due diligence, and now we're just waiting uh, for the mayor to make a decision. Which you know, the mayor loves the movie, so I think we've got you know. We're in <laughs> so prior to that, um, you know, my life's work has been um, as a a body a body transformation expert. I, I'll call uh-huh. it because. You know, I I, um, I started back in 2000 uh, when I made a decision to really kind of understand the human body and nutrition. And I had a mentor, which I also recommend people get mentors, um, those who have the experience to help you and guide you um, through, you know, specific things. The body is amazing. Uh, yeah. Understanding molecular biology and human, and human nutrition is something I've studied for 20 years. And so and then the application of exercise sciences. So so that is science but how do you sell that right that was the thing that was a big challenge is how do i get the average person to understand that this is what it's going to take to get your body and your life to the next level and having to to not sell a membership because Mm. when you sell a membership that's like going to planet fitness or like going to la fitness or something is selling a membership What we do as experts is we sell the outcome. When you sell an outcome and people can visually see, oh my God, that's what I can be in six weeks or three months or six months, then all the necessary steps to get them there are kind of like just taking your flight to your vacation destination, right? And then guess what the flight is? That costs money. And what does it cost to get to your destination? You got to eat, you got to have fun, and that costs money. (laughs) And so by closing them on the outcome, typically the cost is really kind of simple to overcome any kind of objections at that time. And I can even go back further as my career as an actor. So being an an actor is, um, it's a very interesting industry because you get to be many different types of characters. Me, I got casted as a bully. So, you know, (laughs) how did I close that deal? was I listened to the objections or the coaching from the director and I overcame those by showing the outcome, by showing them what it is that uh, a 10 year old actor can actually do or portray or be a different type of character. And then of course, you know, there's the personality of the person acting that specific character. So I kind of learned how to close at a very young age being an actor because you have to be a certain specific thing to that each individual casting director. Yeah. So, and this, this pours over into sales because every human is different and you, you cannot be a robot to each individual human. You have to adjust your tonality, your body position. You have to image, right? You have to mirror them. You have to utilize, um, your experience, in order to show that you have compassion. You you yeah. want to show that you care about them more than they care about you, 100%. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you share a lot of things in here that ties back to this, and you know, uh, congratulations on the successful career and all the cool things you're working on right now. Thanks, and I, I wanna capitalize on, you know, I wish we had a whole lot of time. We're gonna have, you know, probably like, you know, 20 minutes to be able to dis- decipher your amazing years down of closing into a few things sure. pre-call you and i were talking about this and about closing deals and your experience with that what are the biggest hesitations or challenges that salespeople or you know people that are selling have when it comes to closing in your opinion uh the biggest challenge that i've experienced is asking for the money why is when, that one? yeah that one that one's a big one um because <laughs> you kind of need that you, can, you, you have to i mean so that's one thing that you want to want to work on yourself if you have a problem asking for money then that's your that is something that you're dealing with personally what do you mean because, by that go deeper because I, I feel like so there's something in there there is so there's there's a lot in that because if if you that typically means that you have some kind of learned behavior that causes you to feel like you're asking for something you may have a personality trait that you want to give 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 and never receive right mm-hmm. and if you have a problem with receiving or asking for something then you're going to have a problem closing a deal. You have to be okay with knowing in your body and in your mind that by asking for something, you're actually giving something tenfold to that individual. Come on. You know, I, and I think you're right on that. I, I grew up in a situation where I, we didn't have much money, um, Yano, and, um, and there, there was, I remember one of the first deals I worked on, big deals, it was uh, – 
it was like uh, 50, uh, 50 K. Um, and the smaller ones were around 10 K. Let's just start off there. But even that was like ridiculous because people are paying for it training classes. My mom was making 23,000 or 25,000 per year. Um, when I found out this stuff on my FAFSA in college, and I was like, what, how did we survive? And then somebody's paying 10 K in my mind. Do you think I feel confident asking for $10,000 for somebody to do a weekend boot camp or even a five day boot camp? <laughs> you know, that, that had to have been really challenging <laughs> for real, for real. Yeah, and that it was had to all, been really challenging. Yeah. It was all in here. Like you're saying, it's like in, in my head where I felt that I could not receive that because that was way too much. Um, for it, but it was my own inabilities that held me back from asking for more of that 100%. Those sales. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and you know that that's that's something that you have to work on. Yeah, uh, and that 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 trauma literally is what it is. Is something that you have to learn how to let go of. Yeah, because again, you know, if if you use that in a positive way, then asking for a fifty k close in the ripple effect is that you are helping an individual scale, but mm -hmm. you're also helping your own personal pocket, which then the waterfall effect is now you can possibly take care of your mom or give gifts back to your mom. You know what I mean? For, for all of the hard work that she put in to raise you, now you have a chance to actually give back. It's just, it's perception and, yeah. and um, you know, it's, it's your ability to just let go. So, so most people with that fear, some kind of trained, some kind of learned trauma, how do you help sellers to break past that um, to, to get to that point? Because, or is all hope lost? I mean, I fortunately, I got past it yeah. <laughs> and yeah. we, you know, we make money, but now what, how, but how would you help somebody in that situation, especially if there's a seller on your team and you're trying to help her or him to, to overcome some of these uh, initial biases? Yeah, you know, I think it's, it's again, it's sifting through the objections and the concerns that that individual has. Mm. Because if they have an issue with asking for money in a large amount, then there is a concern. They're yeah. concerned. And figuring out what that concern is, talking through that, and then creating value as to why. What is the why of that individual, right? And then what you could create that value around there. And then typically people start to realize that I, I'm not hurting anybody because it's typically a fear that you're going to hurt somebody by asking mm -hmm. for so much money. Somebody's going to go broke. Like if I ask for $50,000, somebody's going to be homeless because of that. You know what I mean? So um, it, it's, it's really diving deep in as to the why that person has a concern for genuinely being okay with asking for a large amount of money. Yeah. Um, and it also depends on what their what their what kind of service or product they're actually offering too, right? That has a lot to do with it. Because if you buy into what it is that you are providing, and you have conviction about it, then typically those those issues of asking for money will dissipate over a period of time. Uh, it doesn't happen overnight. And I will guarantee you that it takes time, it takes time, it takes practice, this. It takes uh, meditations. It takes all kinds of different types of applications, right, to be okay uh, in yeah. in those moments. And then once you do close, and once you see that person that you sold that thing to, kind of catapult to the next level of excitement and fulfillment, then you start to build confidence that what you're doing is actually your purpose in those in that time. I think that part comes in where you know you you one of the biggest components from that message that you shared is like the build confidence. Uh, it's something that takes time. You know, you you work on, you, you go towards, but it's building, building that confidence. I can tell you that it it took time for me, but um, fortunately, I had coaches and mentors that helped me and guide me. But when I finally did, when I started asking for the money, I recognized. I think what it ultimately came to, I realized from the clients that they were I was doing them a disservice by not asking for that money because 100%. these people. They're coming from companies, when you understand context, that were like, you know, large companies like Adobe. And these people, if they get hijacked or have any type of, um, you know, infrastructure in their IT, you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. So is $50,000 a problem for them? No, it's a drop in a bucket. And they were willingly trying to make that investment. And then some of the people that were doing individual training, $10,000, yeah, but that's going to help them to increase their salary by you know multiple tens of thousands per year so yes. it was totally worth it so once i understood that it helped me to then be more confident like you said when you ask for it it just made a difference um the actual asking for it is another component we are talking about yano uh, in, in the services that you are offering um you know what was it easy for you to quickly ask for it the the sale um and then i want to go into 
what's the, some strategies? You shared one of the strategies with me, but how did you do initially? Yeah, so um, th there's a process. When you have a process that is laid out, mm -hmm. um, and that typical process will speak to that individual's needs, right? Um, and, and the close can happen a lot sooner than actually going through the entire process. So it's really identifying when that person actually has been – um, convinced or is ready to purchase or still has some kind of objections or concerns about that investment, right? So I think that it just comes with experience. Uh, in, in the initial, I would say, beginnings of working for a company that you have a script and you read the script and you go through, you know, all the different aspects of what that product is, there may be some questions, there may be some things you have to work through. But once there's clarity, once that individual understands the process and understands the outcome of what it is that they are going to do. There's really no need to continue to try to sell them because authenticity and being genuine in what their needs are, are paramount. Mm. Having that, that conversation where they actually feel like they can trust you is so important, right? And so just allowing yourself to be that professional that's actually concerned about their concerns, works through their concerns and then once they're ready to make that decision, then you just you, you go right in for it. Like, yeah, there's there's really no need and there's no more need to continue to talk. Mm -mm. And there's many different applications of the sales calls, right? There is going through a process and then saying, you know, which option is works best for you. You know, what, what there's there's many different ways to close people. But I think that when you are natural and you are genuine and you could speak to that person's needs, it makes closing a hell of a lot easier. You know, you mentioned the the idea there of being natural with it and following the process. I think those were some of the components that helped me the most, um, especially in that part. I, I remember, <laughs> I remember once I was doing door to door security sales, right? <laughs> and you're sitting at these, you, you knock on this door, you're talking to people, and you're sitting at their table now, and you're trying to close this thing. They get you, and you do just like the just just take the almost like the the staggered approach, like up you're ascending the stairs. Um, idea where one you're getting them to with to run credit right or we ask them first we ask them where in the house would you want the <laughs> the the unit and then we go to the wall and we say okay we're well, right here and then where would you put your sensors which windows would you want to cover which door and I start filling out the form <laughs> like as if you're doing that so it becomes real and then I you know we say okay what you know if you had security systems before do you if you gotten a you know we need to just double check on your credit they would go through their credit part because it's already real because they want to get their units in the, the box and everything. And then finally you come to the point where when you come to that sale asking for the money, Yano, I can tell you I was sweating bullets. But because of the process, <laughs> because now it's following the process, right, it was like I did everything else. Just do this part of the process and just yep. shut up. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. And usually when you say, okay, so would you, how would you, what kind of credit card would you have uh, you would like to pay for this with? Um, or you want to do – it's like either credit card or you want to do ACH. <laughs> right. and it was just like amazing how that happened. But the key came down to this – I had to be confident and calm, and I had to stay with that process. And the more I did it, I realized nothing bad was happening, and then I became more authentic, like your, the last message you're saying there, because it was just now I owned it as Donald. So the closing was, wasn't was that more – wasn't that difficult. It was just what Donald typically does. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? 100%. Yeah. That's your authenticity. Oh. And that shows with people because yeah. I'll tell you right now, if people let you into their house nowadays, there's already <laughs> a level of trust. Yeah. There's <laughs> already a level of trust. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, nowadays, you know, a young kid can what? come up and knock on the door and look professional, but yet have a, a gun on their back. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And so, you know, that level of trust is huge. And then the yeah. next, the, the, the green light, in my opinion, was when they're open to actually run a credit check, psh, you uh -huh. already closed it. You already yeah. closed it. And I, I go back to that. This was like back in uh, 20, 2010, 2009. It was when LeBron went to Florida. Uh, so it was like, what, 2009 or uh, that time period. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, it was like, it was interesting though, Yano, like how, or 28, 2008, whatever, around that time. But it was interesting to, you know, how you get the person to that level. One, they had to have interest and they had to have a commitment. They had some, some, saw some kind of value in it. And then two, they had to see that it was real. Um, and you know, we weren't swindling people. They were getting security systems, getting their homes protected, but they just didn't know me 
but it uh, and I had to get past that that it was they they had something a need that we were fulfilling um and helping them out with it and but yeah it, it yeah I look back on those days I'm like would I have done that would I have let somebody in <laughs> Right. But yeah, uh, I guess I, so guess that I that shows right. that shows a lot, Donald, about your energy, yeah, and about how you presented yourself. Okay, yeah. so just just know that you know that's like a huge pat on your back to show that people actually trusted you to come into their home. So yeah. that's huge, man. You know what I mean? That's huge for your confidence, first of all. But second of all, that that should build you up later on in <laughs> life that that you know that just because of your presence, people yeah. will trust you. Yeah. How how do you teach that though to mm. like say people on your team? Because I'm sure you had other reps or people that worked with you, and you're like, gosh, dang it! I, I, how, how do you teach them to get to that point? Well, um, that's a very good question. So I I think Donald's like I'll that, fire them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's there are specific you know personality <laughs> traits. Um, you know, literally according to the archetypes of the world that. Yeah. We as business owners um, and or, you know, are responsible for that department. It's our responsibility to kind of identify those traits in, in a person that is actually genuine uh, and is actually can be authentic or has the qualities to want to learn. Right. Because a lot of the times people will be kind of uh, held back from wanting to open up because they're dealing with their own crap or their own, you know, their own trauma. So yeah. but I think. I think everybody has the ability to want or the ability to actually learn these traits. It really depends on how bad they actually want it. And sometimes it may take a long time for somebody to get really good at it. And sometimes people, as you know, they have this a natural knack for it. You yeah. know what I mean? So I think the traditional, you know, coaching and training and showing systems and, and really practicing and like, you know, doing these, um, these live calls and just going through a process and getting them used to the environments used to the process then it becomes a lot easier to talk to a real person mm. and actually do a real close uh because i remember the first time that i did like a live zoom call boy i was nervous like i don't even know why i was nervous like i've been doing this for years but yet i'm sweating and i'm and i'm trying to follow the script and you know in my mind i'm thinking why am i following the script i should just be who i am i've been doing this my entire life but it's like you know when you follow the process typically processes are in place because yeah. they work you know what yeah. i mean they work and I think that's probably what it comes back down to. Like if I'm coaching an individual, I'll, I'll probably go back to what you just saying there. Yeah, certain person, personality types are not going to work. And no matter what you do, it's just it, – it's square peg can't fit in a circle. And Correct. And, and as a business thing. owner, you have to make that decision. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether you want to spend the time, the money, and the effort in trying to develop somebody or find somebody who's already done it. Yeah. Uh, and then the other part to that, too, is teaching them the process. And if you don't have that process, I, I find business owners that I work with or sales leaders, they're like, hey, I'm looking to do this. I'm looking to and you know improve, uh, looking to off the sales off of me, especially if they're founder-led company. And then they're like, yeah, I'm just going to hire somebody. But I think what you mentioned there is one of the biggest uh, you know, components. You must have that process because I can't wait for you to come into my company as a seller and bring a process. I must give you that some kind of uh, a, a process to follow. Even if they know how to sell, I should give you some, this is how you do it in our company. When this closes, you contact Marjorie and Marjorie gets them set up with their new account or whatever it is, but you gotta have that um, and give them at least the lay of the land in your, in, you know, the way that it, you, you way that you expect them to do it. Otherwise you're gonna do it on your own um, and you probably won't be excited with the results, so. Yeah, that that is part of the uh, onboarding process for each individual, you know, yeah. salesperson that you'll bring on, right? The onboarding process is essential to identifying those who actually can fulfill the job because you may feel comfortable with somebody's personality, but they just can't close. And that's yeah. okay. You know what I mean? That's okay. Um, and, and it just helps you help them to basically get your shit together and to get some more coaching you know what i mean and come back when you're ready because we don't we don't you know put you through a, a ten thousand dollar coaching program and, and get you ready for this position you got to come in with experience you got to come in with hunger you got to come in with that attitude if i want to learn and of course each individual business has their own culture right their own yeah. little way and the things and, and here's another thing too though is that depending on your onboarding process you may be able to mold that individual into exactly what it is that you want because a lot of the times when you got a salesperson that's been doing it for 20 years and they kind of go against the grain of what you're trying what your culture is that's also not a good fit you know what i mean yeah yeah that's interesting um 
I, I think the cultural fit is one of the components that you got to have. I, I find that to be one of the first things that I try to look at. Um, obviously, you want aptitude and capability, but you got to, if they can't be a part of the, the flock, and I've had one like that recently, and we still let that person join a team, but then they self-selected and they didn't fit. So, but yeah, no, we could go on for days on this, but you gave me so many, so much to think about, especially from a leader, helping my team to close, understanding my own, maybe for each of us, understand our own intrinsic biases that we may have and how we may be holding a client back. And then also just the tactics of being following the process of being able to ask for the credit card or ask for the payment. Yeah. Um, find that to be yeah. helpful. So, um, yeah. Well, you know, just one other aspect, too, is that sure. when you're comfortable in asking for the money, then it also makes it easier for you to ask about their financial health, because a lot of the times people don't know that they can afford it because they're spending on so so much other just un unnecessary stuff in their life. And I always like to use Starbucks as an example. When somebody <laughs> goes to Starbucks 10 times a month, you know what I mean? And they're telling you they can't afford 150 bucks a month, then you know that they're they're not honest with themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So so all those little kind of nuances, those little kind of tactics that we can use to kind of infiltrate into their lifestyle is an important thing for, for salespeople. But doing it genuinely and authentically, because remember, the goal is to help that individual. Yeah. Right? Yano, um, you guys have a podcast. Tell us a little bit about that podcast. Yes. Yeah, so talking a Christmas story with the cast is an incredible podcast where we have accumulated a lot of the cast members, most mm -hmm. of them. Um, in really giving their story about their experience of A Christmas Story and what it was like and what they're doing now. And then also behind the scenes characters such as Ruben Freed, who is the uh, original designer, uh, the, the arts director for A Christmas Story, who created the actual leg lamp. So we've got a lot of, as a matter of fact, I just interviewed um, Jonathan Stoddard, which typically a lot of people don't know who Jonathan Stoddard is, but this man is is a celebrity. He has been doing Christmas movies for years, but it's Hallmark. It's Disney. Yeah. I mean, that's the genre that he has been cast in. And he was a huge Christmas story fan. Like, literally, here I am talking to a very famous celebrity, and he was fanboying on Grover Dill. It made me feel amazing. Like, this is cool, you know what I mean? Because yeah. you just don't know you know, who has touched uh, or what move, who who this movie has touched in their heart. You know what I mean? So um, talking a Christmas story with the cast is just a very diverse, I would say, podcast, which encompasses Christmas, not just a Christmas story. And if you're interested, all your viewers, if you'd like to learn about it, you can go to our channel, you know, A Christmas Story Family, and the podcast is there. We're on all the platforms as well. And we've got actually some amazing things coming up as well. We're probably going to be wrapping up our first season here as well. And we've got a lineup for the second season that will blow your mind. Yeah, but yeah. again, there's also going to be some nuggets that you guys want to get a hold of because we've got some really good things coming up uh, for the future of the Christmas story family. So is it just during the Christmas time? Do you guys have the podcast? N no, we actually do it year round. So nice. uh, yeah, Christmas story or talking a Christmas story with the cast is going to be happening year round. We're going to be doing probably a couple of seasons a year is what the Got goal it. is, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, so that's that's what we are all about is just really talking about what Christmas means to them, how it's created family traditions, the value, or I should say, the essence behind uh, what it is that we are accomplishing is bringing us together closer together in this this net of the love that we share within our families and the outskirts or the noise or what has caused us to come together is typically a christmas story right so um we love to be able to tether us all together as one big family because this movie has meant so much to so many people in their lives with so much emotional ties to it that now they have a platform to share that experience with the world. Um, and this is going to be the only podcast that actually is going to bring all the cast together as well. So anybody and everybody out there, all you listeners that have never seen the movie, I highly recommend that you go do it. It is the 
only Christmas movie that has increased in the amount of views it has had every single year for the past 40 <laughs> years. So that's, that's why nuts. it is literally in the Library of Congress as one of the most popular Christmas movies ever. And so um, share it with your kids. And for those of you who love the movie, share it with your kids, share it with your family. And thank you very much for being fans. We truly love you as the cast. Uh, we love you very much for supporting this, this process of keeping this movie alive for generations to come. Love it, man. Well, Yana, we're going to put all the stuff in the show notes for that. And we're going to put folks the Facebook group as well. Over yes. close to 100,000 people in that Facebook group. So yeah. we're going to put that in our show notes as well. So you guys can join that. Thank you so much for joining us and coming on the show today, Yano. Thanks, Donald. That was the one and only Yano Anaya. Tell him that you heard him here on the Sales Evangelist podcast. And check out Talking a Christmas Story. You can find a podcast link in the show notes as well as the Facebook group. And they have a lot of community members in there. And I'm grateful to be a part of that community to be able to you know, just bask in the, the coolness, you know, hearing some of the character story and some of the back uh, behind the scenes stuff that I didn't know anything about um, watching that movie is fascinating. And as he mentioned, it's not just a Christmas movie, a uh, Christmas podcast. They're talking to Pete, all of the crew members throughout the year. And it's really fascinating. Check it out again. As always, I want you to thrive and succeed. And with that, we have sponsors that are giving you amazing deals. Like, I mean, you can't beat some of these deals. And I'm not just doing this just to do it. I'm doing it because it really can help you. So I want you to take advantage of it. Advantage of it. And if you're having struggles with LinkedIn, you should check out our LinkedIn prospecting course. We will guide you through that process. You can go to the salesevangelist.com slash LinkedIn and go ahead and sign up. But I'd love to have you. Um, as always, I want you to thrive and succeed. I want you to raise your level of thinking. I want you to make more money. I want you to be able to close deals. But most importantly, I want you to be able to be at the level you know you're supposed to be. Um, I want you to achieve the goals that you have. I want you to go out and do big things. Can't wait to see you. Can't wait to connect on LinkedIn and have you in our program. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.